we will take a look at algebra in chapter 6. In particular, we will be looking at equations and inequalities. The belief that humor and laughter can have positive effects on our lives is not new. The Bible tells us a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Proverbs 17.22 Some random humor factoids. The average adult laughs 15 times each day. 46% of people who are telling a joke laugh more than the people they are telling it to. 80% of adult laughter does not occur in response to jokes or funny situations. Algebra can be used to model the influence that humor plays in our responses to negative life events. The last tidbit that your author threw into the list is true. Based on our sense of humor, there is actually a formula that predicts how we will respond to difficult life events. Formulas can be used to explain what is happening in the present and to make predictions about what might occur in the future. In Chapter 6, you will learn to use formulas and mathematical models in new ways that will help you to recognize patterns, logic, and order in a world that can appear chaotic to the untrained eye. So we're talking about algebraic expressions and formulas in this section. So we're going to evaluate algebraic expressions. Not too bad. We'll look at some mathematical models. We'll talk about the vocabulary of algebraic expressions. In other words, how do you create some of them? What do they mean? And fourth, simplifying algebraic expressions. Probably the easiest part, even though it's number four. So algebraic expressions, let's start with this. First of all, algebra uses variables, and those variables use letters, but those represent numbers. So when you see the X and the Y inside algebra, you don't talk about letters, X and Y. You're talking about variables that represent some numbers. Sometimes you know what those are, sometimes you don't. An algebraic expression itself is putting together some variables, letters, and numbers, and also with some operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, even roots and powers. Put those together in some meaningful fashion and you've got an algebraic expression. And we've got some examples down here. Let's take a look at this. x plus 6, x is a variable, represents a number, plus 6. We know what the 6 is, we don't know what the x is yet x squared minus 6, another algebraic expression. 6x. Now notice that 6 and x are right next to each other. And that means that once we find out what x is, this 6x represents 6 multiplied times whatever the number x is. And here's one with a square root. The square root of x plus 7. All these are examples of algebraic expressions. So this is very important. I would hope you would know most of this already. So first of all, performing the operations inside the parentheses. Inside the parentheses. If there are more parentheses, it starts with the one that's on the most inside, and then you work outward. We'll have examples of that once you get some practice. It will become second nature if it isn't already. If it involves a fraction, treat the numerator and denominator as if they were in parentheses. So if you have a fraction like this, and you're evaluating this, you're going to do the x plus 3 first, the 7 plus y first, then you'll do the division, which is what this fraction bar represents. Once you've taken care of the parentheses, the second thing you need to do is evaluate all exponential expressions. Once you've got that done, then it's the multiplication slash division part. And fourth of all, all addition and subtraction. Both of these Multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Once you're in that mode, 
you take everything from left to right until you've cut everything finished. Now one way you could write this, where's my, there we are. So what you might memorize if you need to is P-E-M-D-A-S. You know what that means? It means parentheses or grouping symbols first, then any exponents, multiplication and division next, together left to right, and then addition and subtraction left to right until you've got all that done. So here's an example for you. So this one says take that 7 plus 5 times x minus 4 cubed and what we're going to do is we're going to say this time x is a 6. So where the x is in here you're going to replace that with a 6. So here's the original expression right here and you take the x out and put in the 6. Just rewrite the whole thing. Don't try to do it all at one time. Just rewrite it with where you see the x, put it in 6, and move from there. Next, parentheses comes first. There's a grouping symbol right here. 6 minus 4 is that 2. Next, we've got a power right here. It is 2 to the third power. That's next. So we'll work the exponent. 2 to the third power is an 8. Rewrite the whole thing. Then you'll do the multiplication because multiplica multiplication comes before the addition. So we'll do this next. Multiplication. That's done. Then we're, we're ready to do the addition or subtraction. Addition and subtraction. Of course, we didn't do any division, but it would be in this, this line. Formulas and models. You get an equation when you put the equal sign in the middle. Where is my, there it is. So you sort of start with an equal sign. Let's put this up here. Put an equal sign between two algebraic expressions. So you could have x minus 9 on this side. That would be an algebraic expression. And over here, 7x minus 2 perhaps. An algebraic expression here. An algebraic expression there. With an equal sign between them. And that gives you an equation. This is an equation. Where's my marker? There we go. Equal sign, an algebraic expression here, and an algebraic expression over there. You've got an equation. A formula uses letters to tell you what's the connection between two or more variables. We use models to describe the real world. For example, one possibility is a Fahrenheit temperature and a Celsius temperature. You can develop an equation with some other letters and numbers in there and that'll take either one of those and convert it to the other. That's what mathematical model is. Next, we've got a bar graph shows number of calories per day to keep an energy balance and this is for various gender and age groups of relatively active lifestyles. Here's the model. Notice that W the W right here represents the number of calories a 
and you might wonder why the W. Well, they could have made that a C, which would have been a little bit handier for you, but calories they're equating with work. And X represents age group. So if you look down here at the graph, here you have the age, the age groups, group one. Now in the formula itself, you're just going to have a one for group one, two for group two, three for group three, four, five, and six. You don't put the word group in this formula right here. So for example, if you want it for group three, you put a three in for that X and the three in for that X and evaluate that expression and you'll get the number of calories for those women. So here's one for you to try. According to the model, how many calories per day are needed by women between the ages of 19 and 30 exclusive? Well, first of all, which group is that? We need the group to put it in put that number in for X. So 19 to 30, if you look at the bottom here, there's the 19 to 30 age group. And if we go up here, that's group number four. So you take that four and you take your formula, which is W equals negative 66 X squared plus five 26x plus 10, 30. And for both of those x's, you'll put in a 4 because we're talking about group number 4 for age wise. So here's the formula with the x's. Here's the formula with the fours put in where the x's were because this is group four we're talking about. Notice that there are no parentheses. We don't have to worry about that. But the next thing is the exponents. So we do the exponents first. So that gives us 16 here. No other exponents. The next thing, so this is exponents here, from here to here multiplication and division. In this case, there's only multiplication there and there. And once the multiplication and or division are done, then just start on the left, take that negative 1056, add in the 2104, and then take that answer and add 1030. So that means that since we got 2,078, 2,078 calories are needed per day by women in group four, which is the 19 to 30 age range, if they're moderately active. Some other things about algebraic expressions. Each one is simple. Terms are pieces of the expression. They're separated by addition or subtraction. Typically, when we talk about addition in general, we're talking about subtraction too for certain rules. So addition or subtraction separates terms or pieces of the algebraic expression. So in this one, it says or the terms. So look for the addition and subtraction. And I've got red ink right here. So we'll create a fence at this subtraction, a fence at this subtraction. We've got three terms. We've got 7x, stop. 9y, stop. 3, stop. The coefficient is the number in front of the variable. Number in 
front, on the left hand side, of the variable. And those variables are represented by letters. Next, constants. Those are numbers for which you have an exact number, and it's not going to change from one time to the other. So in this left early expression up here, the constant is negative 3. Because regardless of what x and y are, that's always a negative 3, period. Those things don't change, that's why it's called a constant. Now this one is important. Like terms. That's important because those are the things you can add and subtract. Like terms have the same variable part. For example, in this one, this has an x, this has an x, no other variables. So these two are like terms. If we have 8x squared minus 9x squared, these are like terms because the variable part looks exactly the same. Keep in mind also that if you should have something like this, 2xy minus 5x, oops, yx, these are actually like terms because the order doesn't matter. We're multiplying. 2 times x times y is the same as 2 times y times x. So these two are like terms terms. So you can add or subtract them. And last of all on this slide, factors. They're the parts of every term that are multiplied. So for example, let's come out here and take a look at 7xyz. The factors are 7 and x and y and z because those are the pieces that are multiplied together. Next, we've got some properties that you've probably used for a long time. The first one, and I'll just go over these briefly because you'll be using them automatically, commutative property of addition. First of all, the operation is addition. Commutative means it doesn't matter what the order is. You can take A plus B or B plus A, you get the same result. And you can extend that to algebraic expressions. 13x squared plus 7x is the same as 7x plus 13x squared. You can switch them around. The same sort of thing applies to multiplication. A times B is the same as B times A. In other words, like 8 times 6 is the same as 6 times 8. Very handy. And it applies to algebraic expressions too. x times 6, 6 times x are the same thing. Next. Now this one might look a little bit funny at first. This means that you can actually put parentheses a little bit different if everything is addition. Notice everything is addition. So if you add the A and the B together and then add C, you get the same thing as if you added the B and C together and added the A in. Now how is that helpful? Let's suppose you had 7 plus 2 plus 8. Let's suppose this is your expression with parentheses around the 7 and the 2. The nice thing is you can rearrange this so that the parentheses are around the 2 and the 8 instead. So make it 7 plus and put the 2 and the 8 together. Well, why do you care? Well, you do care because although this is a simple example, 
adding 2 plus 7 is 9, adding 9 and 8 might be pretty easy, but it's even easier if you add the 2 and the 8 together first, because that gives you 10, throw in the 7, 17. This one is just a little bit easier, thanks to the associative property of addition. Again, we've got the same thing for all multiplication. Now, how could that be helpful? Let's suppose you've got 3 times 5 times 2. Well, the easy way to do this is not taking 3 times 5 and then multiplying it by 2, which you could. You'd have 15 times 2, and you get 30. Easier, though, would be change the associativity. Make it 3 times 5 times 2. Why is that easier? Because if you multiply those two together first, you get 3 times 10, and that's even easier than 15 times 2. And you still get the 30. The associative properties of addition and multiplication. And last but not least, the distributive property of multiplication over addition or subtraction. Uh, multiply, multiplication, uh, oops, of multiplication over addition and subtraction. That means if you've got multiplication out here and you've got addition in here, what you do is you multiply this times the B and times the C and keep that sign between them or that operation between them. So A times B, AB, A times C, AC, and if it's subtraction you do basically the same thing. A times B, there's your AB. Minus because it's minus between them, and then A times C. So if it's out here and it's multiplication, multiply it times both of them. Go practice, you get good at this. So let's take a look at this one. So what we've got here, and I'm going to rewrite it up here, work it out for you, and go through the steps slowly. So, you see some parentheses here. The distributive property must be done first because there's 6x here, but you don't have a 5x here to add it to. You have to do this distribution first. So 5 times 3x gives you 15x. That's this. And then 5 times your 7 will be negative 35. And just rewrite the 6x. Now, you take a look at that. Okay, are there any like terms? Well, yes. The first one is an x term. The last one is an x term. The one in the middle isn't an x term, it's just a constant, or it is a constant. I don't want to say anything nasty about constants. They're good guys. So these two, we can actually combine. So we take a 15x, this will do in our head of course, but I'm going to write it out anyway. So combine these two, I'll give you 9x. And nothing to do with the negative 35, just write that down. And there is your simplified expression. Well, that's it for chapter 6 beginning, check section 6.1. I hope you followed that. You get plenty of practice. If you need some more practice, let me know, and I can make an extra worksheet for you. Until next time, you take care of yourself. Bye.